All right, so let's uh, call this uh, meeting to order, if we could, at about 6.05. Welcome, everybody. Um, where's my agenda? So, uh, do you approve the minutes? Everybody get a copy of those? They just... No, actually, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Chair, we're going to do that. We're going to do what? You're, we're doing a public hearing on the... Oh, so we are. Right. Before we even do that? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're going to open up. Whoa, oh, wow. Ooh, someone's on the spot. Uh, okay, so we're going to uh, <laughs> open <laughs> our uh, public uh, hearing for our proposed FY20 budget. Um, we invited folks to uh, to attend this meeting. Um, so I guess we should, do you want to present the budget even it's, though we yes. don't have, okay. There is no one here, so, yeah. but, but there's a camera on, so I guess yeah, we can Judy do the kind of the, the quick overview of it. Okay. And then, um, and then you go to your regular meeting, and you're going to vote the budget in your regular meeting. Yeah. Okay. So we'll discuss Trevor, it now. Did you say they're coming? Yes. Then oh, like are they coming? We did, last night. <laughs> we did it twice. Last we did it twice last night. So they are coming. Yeah. I mean, I know I, that, that was the plan. I just had to run over it real quick. We were just having a capital improvement planning committee and joining okay. the select board and finance committee meeting. So they're all. I just ran out. Ken ran out. But I think that was the intention. They were coming, right, Ken? Uh, I didn't really get a chance to ask too many of them if they were planning. I, I, I know anywhere. the finance committee was. Okay, then do well, we, we want to do, do a regular business? Yeah, we can do some regular business. And okay. Go back and forth. Well, we yeah. should, then we should recess the public. Correct. Hearing. Motion to second. Recess the uh, public okay. hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Okay, so we are back into our regular meeting. Or you want recess to one or the other. That's well, a that's right. fun time. Uh, no, we're no Until recess. No recess. Yeah, recess. Yeah, if you want to start, but honestly, we're... Can I have a snack? <laughs> Next time we'll go for a snack, <laughs> not recess. <laughs> All right, how about the minutes from our last meeting on January 10th? Comments? Concerns? Yes. Well, why does it say January 10th? What do you mean? What's it? Looking at the... say February 6th. I beg your pardon. I was just looking at the next line down. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. It's March already. February 6 minutes. My apologies for that being so late, folks. Okay. So not hearing any. There's a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, so moved. So where are we uh, moving along? We're uh, John, do you want to vote yay or stay? yes? No, no, I say yes. Okay. So, financial statements? Yep. Um, there's a uh, envelope of uh, warrants and vouchers in front of you. There are 10 of them all together for a grand total of $110,568.14. Um, you also have um, results of expenditures um, and I ran them for the entire month of February and also through um, today and the reason for that was that I needed to be able to make some um, transfers as we talked about at the last meeting um, there was some changes to the chart of accounts and I wanted to capture those transfers and that and I wasn't able to get to them to, till yesterday so I wanted you to see that they have been done um, but basically, if you look on page two of, um, actually probably more appropriate to look at page three of the report, three, three. Um, you'll notice that it says function teacher specialist 2310. You can see that those lines have been zeroed out. Um, the teacher specialists um, themselves have been infused into the classroom teacher line in uh, function 2305, which is the function prior to this. Mm -hmm. um, I created a line for the SPED teachers and a line for adaptive PE within that 2305 function. Again, this is because of the fact that the DESE has required that we change that in this fiscal year for the purposes of end of the year reporting. So um, that's why that was done. We also had a um, uh, a significant amount of money taken from kindergarten teachers and placed in the long-term subcategory, which if you remember the last uh, set of results I gave you was in significant deficit. Um, we have a teacher who is on an unpaid leave, and so the savings from that unpaid leave have been moved into the long-term substitutes to pay for, um, pay for that. Uh, pretty much everything else has been uh, brought in line with one uh, 
line that I still need to deal with is the special education subs, which is on right. page three under uh, function 2325. I want the dust to settle on all these other transfers and then see where mm -hmm. we stand. Um, I believe you do have the funds to be able to make that transfer to make that line whole and to make sure that we're good uh, to the end of the year. My next step from here, now that I've done all of this uh, kind of uh, moving things where they need to be, um, will to be begin to do some projections to the end of the year now that we're three quarters of the way through, um, be able to project what your you know actual expenditures will be so that you'll have a, a good sense of, of where you're at. So I hope to have that done for the April meeting. Okay. Other than that, it's just the usual comings and goings of the mm -hmm. budget. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Any questions for Judy? I'm not hearing any. Uh, oh, oh, hearing one? Well, I just, I didn't know if we were going to touch on the uh, school choice. Uh, are we going to do that later? Mm -hmm. And you, I think there was some discussion last meeting about school choice, and I know I saw your right. email out. I did grab some numbers from the town, too, but... I didn't know if Ken still had any questions on that or do you? I was going to leave it for the budget. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. How about any um, public comment in our regular meeting? All right. Sure. Not hearing any? Yeah. Check that one off. Uh, so we're back to budget discussion. So let's hold off for a little bit. We're going to do that in our public meeting. Okay, so we may want some more. Yes, uh, I okay. think. Are others following, John? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They just are here. I think they're following. <laughs> should we talk about the um, transportation contract? <clears throat> yes, they should have at your space the transportation contract. Um, So basically, that's the contract that was put together by the, um, by the school attorney. And in the last page, you'll see the, the bid form. Basically, uh, there was uh, one loan bid, and that was for public transportation. Um, and his numbers for the elementary schools is um, basically $2 more per bus per day. Um, $2 what? Less. Less per bus per day. Sorry. Um, and I think I said it even last night, I said $2 more, so correct that for the television. Um, and, you know, so you'll be voting this at the joint meeting next month, but if you want to look through it, if you have questions, if you want to see the full bid proposal, it's 30 something pages long, you know, that kind of thing. So I didn't make copies of that going through, but I can provide that to somebody if they're interested in that. Um, Basically, what it, what was done in the contract is that Frontier was hit with a larger um, the lion's share of the change in the contract, and um, I think uh, the the group transportation was thoughts on that was that because of regional we haven't started the oh, okay. we, we we held for you guys okay thank you <clears throat> um, because there's reimbursements on the regional transportation he was working knowing how the school operations work, that, that that would be taken up that way. So, okay. you know, that's kind of where we're at there in, in a nutshell. Okay. Did I miss anything? No. Judy was kind of the, the lead officer on that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you an officer on that. Um, of putting the bid together, so she also is. Okay. Understanding what's going on. Great. Okay, thank you for that. And so we will, uh, this will be voted on uh, hopefully approved at our joint meeting. Correct. Okay. Any questions? All right. Let's uh, talk about the school calendar for next year. Yep. So you should have, again, another thing that's kind of the first reading, so you have time to digest it. Um, you have two calendars in front of you, one the school calendar, one the school committee calendar. So um, because in the past, kind of the school committee calendar was something that, oh, that one's easier, so we'll go there first. Um, you know, you just kind of picked your time, time of the month and you just kind of had the date there, but because we attempted to do some combined days so there'd be less nights out for me and the business manager, um, you know, during the um, non-budget months, 
we did so, so I wanted to kind of put it all together to see what people thought of continuing that practice. So, like you know, if there are dates that, especially dates where there, um, you guys are alone, um, you know, so, um, I noticed we have a bunch of 5:30 meetings. Is that new? So 5.30 is when they're combined. Okay. So on days, we did that first half, we did that first half. 6 and then 7.30. We did 5.30? I think we did. Yeah, I think we did 5.30. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so you basically had an hour, and it was yet an hour and a half, and mm -hmm. then I ran across the street. So, yep. um, did that work good for you? It's just, as, to me, I, <clears throat> I liked it. I mean, Waitley has gone to a morning meeting, which is, you know, they're obviously yep. a smaller committee, and they yep. they can do that in their current schedules. Um, so that kind of mm -hmm. makes, I think it puts a little bit more strain on the bookkeeping because they have to get all the warrants ready for one date. But, um, you know, when I go to make copies of all this stuff, and, you know, yeah, I mean, sometimes when I have a meeting at the beginning of the month and I'm getting my superintendent's report at the end of the month, it's got to be a different report because it's been three weeks. You know, it's right. just, there's a, right. there's a, Repetition. Yeah. So that part was easy. Yeah. Um, and then less nights away from my yeah. little guys at home. So yeah, absolutely. That's that's the thought. But Good. you know, again, I'm yeah. I'm open to new ideas and change within the the school committee schedule. And then <clears throat> the student schedule for the year. Yeah. Just for everybody coming in, we held the public hearing until you guys can get here. Um, you can kind of go through um, and look at what we're we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest the biggest change that is going to come up is the Friday before Labor Day not having school. Um, that's something I'm pushing for. I think that you know, I'll give you my spiel, but that's what you so start employing me for is my spiel. So start on Wednesday. So you start Thursday. Wednesday and then you go Wednesday Thursday and then you have the long weekend. Um, we you know, last year? we didn't do it last oh. year. We did the year prior. Oh, okay. Last okay. year kind of got shot down, but okay. I'm pushing for it again. Um, okay. And I don't know if the administrators agree with me, um, but there's a lot of energy to ramp up the school year. Yeah. And so my kind of my my explanation there is including families, and it's a lot. Even at three days a week, three days is a lot for the, the younger kids. It's also ready for my my. Do yeah. I shovel it a little sure, bit? Sure, sure. We kind of set the schedule for what our community values. And the long weekend to kind of close up the summer and being a family time. Oh, I got the roll high from here. Can't look at her. There you go. Is that, you know, we value that. And so, you know, a lot of people come back. You know, teachers are back in the school on Monday. You know, even though they even had a contract. Um, administrators are back well, a whole month. But it kind of it does bring a closure to the summer. It doesn't affect the school year that, that much. Um, I think people are still kind of in summer mode that week. Um, and that's my that's my spiel there. I have not heard. I've heard people missed it. I've not heard that people. I've heard people complain about it at school committee meetings, but I've never heard of parents complain to me that they, you know, why they starting and stopping. But um, I don't know. That's my thought there. Mm -hmm. So call me crazy, but I threw it on there. <clears throat> but it's yours to ultimately vote. Um, everything else. I think everything else is pretty straightforward. Um, the early release of professional development. Um, it was brought up at last night at the Frontier meeting. You know, we're still going with that model. I'll be honest, in my first year here, I haven't had time to really dive in and digest it. Exactly. I will say that, you know, the old model was no professional development, or right. very, very little. And while I think we can improve upon what we're doing, I don't want to throw something out and not have something better to replace it with. So um, I think it's going to be part of our administrative team's task next year to look at how we're delivering this is this the best model, but I'm not ready to change it midstream right now and, and do a rush job on that. So that's, so I'm putting the same proposal, the same calendar for it, so. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right, great. Any comment okay. from the committee? No. no. Hearing any, we're gonna move along. Why don't we... Mm -hmm. um, Just one quick yes. question. Both of these will be voted at the joint meeting? Yeah. Okay, so this... I, t I told, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. There this doesn't happen. I'm not this, this one. one. This yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. On the agenda was the transportation vote, but because the transportation affects all the towns, I think it's best since we have it next yeah. month that we just vote it as a group. Because yeah. if one town has questions or. Sure. Same thing with the calendar. You yeah. know, it's really something that should be done together. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> 
Okay, so how about a motion to uh, adjourn from our regular meeting? And I have a motion to return to. Yeah, we have a motion to adjourn. You, want to adjourn we'll you, want to, we'll you actually want to recess this meeting because we got to come back to vote the budget yeah, yeah, after the hearing. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. temporary. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just make a motion to <laughs> 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 public hearing? Yes. Good. All second that motion. Aye. All there, aye. Yes, Good. Sir. Aye. Okay, we're back in the public meeting. So, welcome, uh, everybody. Uh, and if we could, um, I guess, Judy, you turn it over. Well, do you or dare to launch us into the 2020 budget? Has everybody got a copy? Yes. All right. So, I'll have you walk through the, the front sure. page and, and talk about how we got to where we're at. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, the, uh, page two of the handout outlines the um, projected changes within the budget. Uh, so this is sort of the 30,000 foot view of uh, all of the detail of the line item budget. Um, as you can see, there is a collective bargaining increase um, that covers um, steps and projected adjustments uh, to um, the salary schedule based on what may potentially happen in collective bargaining. Um, we moved uh, a salary from school choice into the local. If you remember, we had a little discussion at the last meeting about just being mindful of the fact that you're starting to enter that period where you may be spending a little more than budgeted, so you may be dipping into sort of that back end and just, again, just trying to be careful about that. Um, we added some curriculum development stipends, uh, some of which we took from um, curriculum supplies to uh, deal with that. Um, we added a special education teacher, but the funding for that came from uh, tuition to Massachusetts schools, which you can see down at the bottom, um, because we're going to try and keep a student in-house and then build a program that will meet the needs of other students as well. Um, some increases to retirements for teachers. Uh, there's some superintendent office uh, folks who are also retiring, so that's in that mix as well. Uh, Non-union increase. Um, actually is not an increase and the reason why is because your cost to share to uh, both the region and to the union um, has dipped a little bit because of changes in enrollment. Um, so that's part of that, what that is about. Um, and then we did have to add a little bit extra because of having 12 month hourly employees increase from 260 to 262 work days. Usually a work day calendar for uh, 12 employees considered to be 52 weeks times five days, 260 days. Uh, leap year day, forced an extra Monday somewhere, yeah. and ergo, 262 days. It happens once in a great while, and uh, next year is that is that year. Uh, administratively speaking, there is an increase. Um, it is not the superintendent's salary, just uh, saying. Um, but um, there are some projected increases in salaries, um, some cost share changes. The bulk of that is putting back the full-time business manager into the budget, and you'll see as we go down into the operational changes, the decreases in the contracted service. Okay. So again, those two things are sort of um, taking care of each other, as it were. Mm -hmm. So that's your projected salary changes. When you look at the operational changes, first thing is that the uh, TMS contract will end on uh, July 31st of um, 2019 to allow for some overlap with the new business manager. Uh, and so that decrease, again, funds um, having the salary added uh, back into that line. Um, some other little things, uh, again, you can see that there was a move from curriculum supplies into curriculum stipends to cover that amount of money. Um, that's something that's been spent but not been budgeted for, so we just figured we should budget for it. Um, some other very small changes along the way. Uh, transportation, we had projected at the last meeting a uh, significant increase, and in, as uh, Darius mentioned earlier, uh, came in the bid came in at actually at $2 per bus less a day, um, and there was also a decrease in the amount of money for uh, the one camera that is installed on one of the buses per day as well. So uh, that, coupled with some projected increases to special education transportation, actually decreased the line from this year into next by $35,000. Um, some other uh, slight increases to utilities based on what I've been, uh, you know, hearing in terms of electricity and, and fuel and that kind of thing. That's where that is. Uh, network and telecom, there was a decrease in some licensing needs. Um, 
our insurances um, from the health and dental side of the equation, which I know that um, you don't pay direct, directly, but um, just so that you're aware that um, the Hampshire Council of Governments is not increasing premiums either on dental or on um, health insurance this year. So that uh, little bit of wiggle room allows for some contract changes. It also allows for, we know we have some retirements, people coming in, potential of new employees needing greater plans than the plans that are being left. So we wanted to leave you a little wiggle room to make sure that that was all able to happen. And then the tuition to Massachusetts schools has been decreased by 107,000. Again, that's um, bringing the student back into the school and that funds that extra special education uh, teacher position. So the net change altogether, and I apologize, that number did not carry over as it should have been. Um, but the net change from um, the uh, F FY19 to 20 budget is actually 2.7%. So I apologize for that. I just caught that error. Um, between the two, so. Can I just? Yeah. Yeah. Could I just, yeah. yeah. I mean, I had, <clears throat> I had noticed that. Mm -hmm. um, I initially focused on this 1.55 percent and 73,940, and yeah. the actual increase looks like it's about 127,300. That's what, Do you have the actual number we've moved back from? Uh, school choice into uh, an approximate number. I don't need the exact. Uh, just a second, and I can find that for my quickly. <clears throat> School choice is going mm -hmm. No, no, just yeah. what we tried to do is we right. tried to move a, we moved a salary that was covered under school choice I into the operations 40, because we've been trying to winnow it down right. over time yes. as our right. and revenues it was, are decreasing. It was a salary that was partially offset yeah. to That's about 40000 give or take. So it's about 40000 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, so I went into school choice and um, talked with uh, the person in our uh, accounting office who deals with the school choice issues and had reconciled with the town a balance moving forward uh, from June 30th of 2018 of $961,539. I did some uh, work on the back end of our own accounting system just to see if, through my own methodology, I could arrive at that same number, and pretty much I did. When I looked at the expenses for um, FY18, you had um, coming into FY18 from 17 a balance forward of $804,561. Mm -hmm. You had school choice tuitions coming in at $511,096. Um, what was budgeted against that was um, $498,546, but was, what was actually expended was $354,118. So there was actually a savings of $144,427 as a result of that. So, um, and I went then into the back end of FY18 expenditures on the general fund side. So a lot of activity at the end of the year as is customary of cleaning up the budget and, you know, doing reclassifications of expenses, and there was a lot of activity in the salary arena. So what I'm guessing is that uh, some of those things for like special education, uh, instructional assistance, those things look like they may have been moved back into, um, you know, some things may have been moved around within the budget. So that um, is what caused the, the decrease, I think, was probably some offsets on the local side in 
concert with what you've been talking about, trying to you know preserve school choice as much as you can. So I came to within 35 cents of the number mm -hmm. that uh, our accounting office uh, actually came into. So I feel pretty confident that that 961.539 is is a valid number. Um, so um, the anticipated revenue this year, there has been a decrease, as uh, I explained to you in the uh, February meeting, um, in December after the October 1 uh, census is done of all of the districts, the <coughs> school finance office at the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education does an adjustment to school choice revenue coming in. So that school choice adjustment for this year, currently now active, is $401,994. Um, so that's kind of where you are. So when you look at the balances forward against uh, some accrued payrolls and that um, increase, you're looking at an anticipated revenue and balance forward for this current fiscal year of $1,362,283. So then I looked at um, the actual budget within school choice. Um, and took a look at what was budgeted for expenses, what we can anticipate to be expended. Um, and so there's a uh, difference of $28,000, $28,196 more that's actually going to be expended than is budgeted. But you are obviously very well positioned to absorb that within this fiscal year. So that would bring a balance forward, and this is where the mindful part of what's happening with school choice for you begins. Because if you notice, you're walking into FY19 with 961, mm -hmm. you're going to walk out of FY19 with 853.40. So you, again, you can begin to see that that balance is beginning to shift. Yeah. Um, again, anticipated revenue is they usually take the December adjustment and they use that on the first iteration of anticipated revenues coming into this into the school um, on the cherry sheets. Um, that number will change in December. Whether it changes up or down will depend on how many school choice kids are in in and out in Deerfield. So that again will be something to be mindful of when that December adjustment comes. What does that mean to the school choice budget? So. Um, <coughs> We did uh, then do anticipated, uh, all of that leads to anticipated uh, revenue of $1,255,034. Um, you can see using sort of the same kind of budget pattern for FY20 as we used in FY19 and moving that one portion of a salary back into the local budget. We're looking at a total of anticipated expenses for FY20 of $451,271. And again, an anticipated <coughs> ending balance of 803763 So again, you can begin to see that you're chipping away at that balance. And again, it's just one of those things you want to be mindful of because school choice is a volatile funding source. And it depends on who's in. Um, the base amount that you get per student is 5000 but if a student has special needs, then they, you know, that, that increases the amount that you can receive because we're able to build back to the uh, sending district. So again, it's just something to be mindful of. I don't think you're at a point where it's distressed yet, but again, you want to, moving forward over the next few years, just be careful thinking about how you're using school choice and what's happening to that, that fund balance moving forward. Can I ask a question? Sure. Mm -hmm. Just to sound clear, so, um, so we know how much school choice money Deerfield Elementary School got for this fiscal year that we're in now. Do we know that precisely? Like it's the four hundred one nine nine ninety four. So when Correct. it said anticipated at the left, it's really not. A, that's really that's the number now. Yes. For this year, we yeah. know it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just mm -hmm. wanted to clarify. And we know, and that we know that in did you say October or December is when in we December know that they they send us out the adjustment and, right, okay. and then they backpedal the payments. So when when the decrease comes and they started to come at the, in the December yeah. payment. They make up for the fact that they've overpaid you okay. for five months prior to that. And so, and just mechanically, do does the money come in monthly? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It does. So yeah. you're saying so they then figured out December, and then they adjust it so that the next five or six months we're just going to get a certain amount. 
Right, okay. and that makes up for the overpayment right. in the first okay. half of the year, and, and okay. so it all yeah. balances up. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, any other question before I? Yes. Okay. I got, just got a couple. I'm I'm just trying to understand the difference between the budgeted expenses and the anticipated June of 19 number, which is about the 28,200 mm -hmm. approximately. Right. Um, where does that difference come from? <laughs> um, the difference comes from, uh, I was given a spreadsheet of payroll mm -hmm. and how it is broken out and I confirmed with the person who does payroll that in fact the actual anticipated uh, numbers are the real payroll numbers. Um, right. How the budgeted numbers came to be, I can't answer. Okay, um, so we don't know if we are, if a, an extra position has been allocated in or what might be contributing to that? I, I'm just asking the question. I, I, I realize right. you, you weren't involved with what right. established mm -hmm. the budget. Right. Um, but I mean, the, the anticipated basically. represents what actually is going to be charged in terms of salaries. For example, there's a kindergarten right. um, instructional assistant salary that was not budgeted for but is coming out of school choice. Same thing for an early childhood instructional assistant why those were not budgeted for. Um, in part, I think one of them is embedded, or some of them may be embedded into the classroom instructional assistance account. I think it's just, it was not broken out um, well. Right, well, so, and this is, <clears throat> I mean, just going forward when we run into situations like this, I think the committee needs to be informed that something wasn't budgeted properly and do you want to take it out of school choice as opposed to just making a unilateral decision to take it out. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just for future reference. Mm -hmm. I understand where it's coming from and I figured that's what I would hear, that it just hadn't been allocated or budgeted properly so the decision was made somewhere to put it under school choice. Mm -hmm. So what's anticipated? <coughs> Is this the additional person for behavior? Yeah, I, think I, think I think late in the year we might have done it. Maybe. Yeah, he's probably not here. Oh, it might have been that. Yeah, yeah it might have been that. Because I know we did. Okay. okay. It's yeah, not so here we one IA. One IA. IA. All right. Right. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. Okay. what you see down at the bottom for anticipated expenses for FY20 is actually tied to actual salaries. That, right. That's a link. So, um, so that's, um, you know, as real as the number is. Uh, at the moment, and sometimes you have you know new hires or whatever, and that causes a change mm -hmm. as well. So, but again, you're still in great shape. But again, this is the time it's when the you want to start to yeah. start to be mindful of what the trend is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Question. Yeah, Skip Olmstead here for the Finance Committee. A couple of questions. One: Are we still, or is the school still operating under the procedure where, generally speaking? the money that you would use in any given year for special ed money equals approximately the money that came in the prior year, special ed, or, uh, school, uh, choice. Yeah. Yeah. School, school choice, I'm yes. sorry. Yes. As a general rule, okay. And <clears throat> I'm, as I look down the column that says balance on it on page three, mm -hmm. I'm, fine, I'm fine down to the 1,362,000. I'm not sure where the 853040 comes from. It is uh, taking that million 362 yep. 283 and subtracting the anticipated expenses. Okay, the 509. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you've got the uh, anticipated revenue again, which could change next December. Um, and so that's how you get to the 1 million uh, 255. And the anticipated revenue, the 401994, that was what the information that you got from uh, Desi? Yes, that's also on the cherry sheet because they just used the December number to just, start the process. The yeah. Mm -hmm. so 401994 in there twice. Hmm? Isn't that, isn't that in there twice? No. Looking at the sixth grade choice numbers and how many are in that class that are leaving, I suppose, and how many are being added. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So we see that. Mm -hmm. there any major changes? Yeah. Uh, Bruce Hunter, Deerfield Finance Committee. Uh, under the anticipated expenses of FY20, um, it looks like from 19 to 20, is you did take the teacher out of the school choice. Right. That's the difference. That's a forty. Mm -hmm. 
we talked about? Yes. And the reason for that? Again, was to be mindful of the shift now beginning to occur in terms of leaving every fiscal year with a slightly less balance than the year before. You don't want to get to what uh, is called in the vernacular, I guess, the uh, funding cliff, you know, where you're at a point where you're outspending what you're bringing in and then you have no wiggle room. And again, with school choice, it's pretty volatile. <coughs> so as kids come and go in, in a district, it's not just $5,000. It could be $30,000 if, if the child has great enough special needs. So again, you want that wiggle room in school choice to be able to withstand students not choosing another year. They move out of town, the parent makes another choice, whatever the, whatever the reasoning might be. So you never want to come right up against it. So if the 401,994 holds for FY21, that's the amount of money you would try to hold in that budget. Mm -hmm. No, you would be spending more of what you have and retain, well, whatever it's called, in your balance of, mm -hmm. of um, school choice. Right now, you have 803000 mm -hmm. which yeah, is that's, almost that's twice anticipated. the amount that you're, that you're okay. receiving right. in FY20. Right, but in December of next year, that 401 could go up. It could also go down. Mm -hmm. This year, it went down by $109,000. Understood. So, again, being mindful of the shifts of what's coming in versus what's going out. Yeah. We're, we're keeping a two-year cushion. Mm -hmm. well, well, the other thing, if I could just also just if we talk about the mindful stuff, we've actually reduced that sort of reserve by 16 percent just in the last year. Mm -hmm. right. right from 960 to 800. Right. So that's so. not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Right, and, um, and within three to five years, you'll be at the edge of the cliff if you're right, if right, continuing on that trajectory. Right. Yeah. yeah, and the other thing to consider is that at present time, we have 17 students in the sixth grade mm -hmm. in the school choice. Yeah. They are leaving our school, moving on to Frontier, hopefully. Um, the highest number we have in the last, in about four years ago, we started making a conscious effort to reduce the number of school choice students are in an effort to try and get down to a more, quote, native population. But the biggest enrollment we have is about seven. Mm -hmm. So we might add, this year we added um, kindergarten six school choice students. Mm -hmm. So we're going to replace 17 with somewhere between five and ten students probably. So we're going to lose another $50,000 in school choice. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all... It's, it's kind of a catch-22, you know, we, we heard townspeople express concern with school choice, yet this is a program that has provided us with approximately a half a million dollars a year in <coughs> funds, in addition to the ability to, to complete capital projects. When in a conscious effort to try and reduce it, I think at one point in time we had almost 35% of the students in this building were school choice. Mm -hmm. So in an effort to reduce that ratio, we've been, we've been holding back a little bit on the enrollments and trying to keep our classrooms at the right ratios. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's a whole combination, but it's, as Judy's pointing out, we, we could rapidly reach a cliff. Um, and uh, when we got the numbers last month, I thought, and others on the committee thought we might be a little high in the, the projections, and thank you for going back and double-checking and doing such a thorough job. Um, to have this kind of a reserve uh, is, is pretty, a, a good situation to be in as we, as we try and figure out how to, to make the transition away from school choice. I mean, we had started off the program when we started in school choice, we did not budget any monies. The first year we were in school choice, we said we're going to wait till we're sure the state's going to pay us. So we wait for the school revenues to come in, and then we budgeted the following year to spend it, and we tried to keep a, a reserve of about fifty to hundred thousand dollars for emergencies, which has helped us soften the blow to the town over the years. This has now grown to a pretty significant reserve. As you can see here, uh, nine hundred and sixty-one thousand dollars, and then you add in the, the four hundred. 
and you've got a pretty good budget to work with uh, for the year, but it's going to, going to get tougher and tougher. Is that the part of the thought process as far as transferring uh, some teaching salaries and mm -hmm. positions over to the local mm -hmm. as far as because of the impact and volatility of mm -hmm. school choice monies? Right. And yes. to do it in a way that is not going to be a huge hit to the local budget all at once. We did right. that right. Right. over the that's last couple of years. We've done a couple of positions. I, I remember over the last few mm -hmm. few you know few budget seasons. Um, yeah. But and then you get to a point where you you see if you could you know at some point you got to see if what the town can afford as well. I mean mm -hmm. all these positions we funded on school choice while they're needed. We also run up against the ceiling where we don't have the money to do it either. Right. So well, that's. That was part of my concern with the use of school choice money. Correct. You know, yeah. at some point, are you going to hit you're, that wall? Right. right. So you're, you're hiding that. You're hiding that hit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's a, one other version, maybe on the one on page four, but I was really surprised to see that we have 10 students that are going to other district schools. That really surprised me. <clears throat> Can you mean? Ten, ten, explain three. that again? Ten, ten. ten, we have four going to Conway and six oh, going to Conway. And actually three union. going to Wales. So yeah, three the union. Uh, the union. going out of Deerfield to the other district school. They may, a lot of times there'll be educational programs in those other schools. Sunderland is the wing. There's different programs in different schools, schools. that fit the needs. still pay $5,000. Uh, no, I think no, those no, students we, that are going out would be a tuition to an independent I don't think yeah. they'd be reflected in school choice. Right. Sometimes there's families that work in those schools and they want their, their no, students to go to those just schools. Concerned that Thirteen times five thousand dollars is sixty-five. No, sixty-five. They do get the five thousand school choice money. Yeah. They do. Yeah. They do get it. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. The other yep. towns do. So we pay it. They get it. And we get 10 back from Sunderland, so. I was just going to say, yeah. I was just looking down there. Sunderland was two. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we get 10 back. So. Yeah, right. If I. But that doesn't so, help. No. So I understand the, you know, the kids going out. We've got 21 kids leaving. Is that correct? Yes. So, mm -hmm. Have we checked to see why? I do understand that, you know, you've got kids that whose parents maybe a teacher in another town and those kids go with them to that. Uh, but 21 seems like a pretty substantial number, particularly for um, a school system that uh, has traditionally been thought of as being a superior school system. Why would you want to move your, your uh, students from uh, Deerfield to Sunderland. No, no disrespect for Sunderland, right. but they spend far less money on a per capita basis than we do. Uh, yeah, so have we checked sure. to see why? In the, I know at some point in time we had, but not years ago. We we looked to see why, but would it be worth looking to see what it is that? I'm yeah, I think I think so. Along <coughs> with you know why they go to charter and. Um, all the other yeah, I, I mean, I yeah. never understood why anybody would want to go to charter, but then again, we certainly have students that go. So. Yep, we do. And we're not the only ones. Yeah, I see. I know, I know on the, um, outside the subject a little bit, but on the collaborative level, we had done a lot of trying to um, advertise our schools. And um, there's a Facebook page and a Twitter page on, you know, um, get the name of it, Pr proud of our public schools or something that was trying to promote the good things that we do in our districts that are, um, you know, trying to just get the word out about how good it is here and how, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what good of a job, you know, what staff we have and the programs we have and, um, so, at, at yeah. least, at least to those it's a youngsters mystery. who next year will be kindergarten students, we yes. identify those students, uh, if we can. Yeah. I did have a question, if I could go back to page three. <clears throat> the question that I asked at the beginning of the, uh, of the meeting, or at least the hearing, where I said it was my understanding that essentially what we're doing is the money that we're using in the budget 
for FY19 uh, school choice funds would be those <coughs> monies that came in during FY18. And the money that we would have at the end of FY19 to use the following year in FY20 would be the money that came in in FY19. <coughs> now, it's, I'm guessing that <coughs> Excuse my me. understanding that you're saying approximately $402,000 will be coming in in FY19. That's what's on the charity sheet? Mm hmm So, again, that yep. would be subject to um, a December adjustment next year. Mm -hmm. and, and we would be using that $400 in school choice money next year. But at the, the balance as of the end of FY, uh, FY19 this year, should be approximately 400,000. And are you telling me that you anticipate getting 800,000 in in school choice money next year? We already no, have. No, no, we already have that. Yeah. That's already there. That's the balance. So my, my question is why? It should be approximately 400, 500,000, not 800,000. Then, the, well, it's probably good, but, well, we can take care of here, but I suspect it's good sort of budgeting practices that help maybe build up a reserve, but by the same token, under what's budgeted here, we're losing 50,000, right? Because we've got 400 of anticipated coming in. Mind you, any spare, and, any spare increments. So you might as well just jack that up between 75 and 100,000 because uh, beyond the if there's 17, you there's 17 choice kids leaving, mm -hmm. just percentage wise, the number of the students that there who are special needs is going to be spare increments that are going to get you close to $100,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if, if there's one, if there's, if there's yeah. one, and we can't go into details in the, in the right. meeting, but if there's one student that receives significant services, that could be $150,000 we're going to lose next year. Right. L lose in uh, revenue, revenue for school choice. Right. Because they're going to be gone. I think out of, <coughs> out of the seven months that we have already, I think we've taken in about 266000 How so much? To about two sixty six. Uh, so far in seven months. I think the number was closer to 500 that I saw a couple hours ago. What are you talking about? School choice coming in? Yes. I thought we already discussed that. Well, that well, we're anticipating. We're I, could, I could be, I could be wrong. We're anticipating just anticipate. what we got already. Oh, okay, versus. but why do we? So it doesn't right. really matter. But I'm just saying. You saw the numbers, so. right? I, I, you know, personally, I don't have an answer, and I don't yeah. think that Judy's in a position to be able no, to answer no, that question. No, I was I'm just raising. I wasn't expecting you to sit there and say, "Well, it's for this, this, and this." But my point was that the money that we should end up with at the end of this year, school choice funds, mm -hmm. are those monies that came in this year. All That's the monies that came in prior to this year, essentially, should have been spent. That was the, that was the, the deal that we've used, or at least I'm aware of, that we used for years. We've tried to, yeah. But we've tried to always, as you may recall back when this started, we've always tried to not spend all of it, but leave some in reserve out of the previous year, you know, out of the revenues that we received. And somewhere along the line in the last couple of years, we must have experienced surpluses that didn't get summarized to the committee because you know, we this is the first time I've seen numbers like this. Yeah, every ever. year, every year we're talking like fifty grand, and we go, yeah, okay, usually well, let's we've get some. Always been presented with a number best. that shows us having fifty to one hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. and that, that one I wouldn't be asking a question about. This. Right. right. So you know, I know that Trevor has checked with Brenda, and Brenda told me tonight she works very closely with Mr. Shepherd over mm -hmm. in the, in the office. Us. And this is the number that they have. So it's, as we're doing the transition, it's n not a bad place to be in. But we also... Better to be this way than the other way around. Yeah, right. So but I, it's still yeah. concerning, because you'd like, where did it come from? Was that so we're in the other way around in other districts. Yeah. Yes, it is. So yes, it is. Yeah. For now, we are in a good place. <laughs> I agree. Fortunately, two of our towns. So let's, um, just because I feel like we just, just yeah. interrupted junior flow on the budget, so... Let's we'll move on from school choice and come back to it, so let's just keep going through. Yep. So again, you can just see, uh, I pulled these off uh, where students are coming from and where they are going to. Pulled off of uh, census uh, files that we get from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, just so you can see where that is. 
On page five of the handout, um, this is the um, cost percentage uh, split between um, the district um, at the regional level and at, at um, the union level as well. You can see that there's been a slight decrease from FY19 into FY20 for both anything that is split between the four towns and the regional, and there's also been a slight decrease in the Union 38, any expenses that are borne by just the four elementary schools um, for Deerfield. And it's just some uh, shifts in enrollment that have happened over time. So um, when you're talking about the um, you know district-wide budget things, that's how those numbers are figured out is by those percentages. And in both cases this year, benefits you. Yes, it does. Yeah. I didn't uh, Frontier picked up more of the percentage at the, at the regional level. Um, and then the last of the pages are um, just line by line uh, what the budget is. Um, at TMS, we use an approach called an all funds approach. So you can see clearly where exactly how what things cost and where they are offset from. So. Um, for your purposes, in terms of thinking about comparing FY19 to FY20, you really want to look at those two blue columns. Mm -hmm. um, the pink column just um, delineates sort of the, the whole of the thing. So particularly if you look on page 8 of your handout, you will notice, for example, in the classroom teachers line, um, that the real number for classroom teachers, and that includes those teacher specialists that we just popped in from the 2310 function, uh, the real number is $1,459,538. But you can see off to the right that 137489 is offset by school choice. And you can see that an additional 30000 is offset by a Title I grant. Um, same thing is true for um, you know, early childhood teachers. And part of the reason why that number is up significantly is because of the one teacher that we brought back in from school choice. Um, but you can see that there's an offset by early childhood revolving way over to the right. Um, SPED teachers, the same thing. One teacher is offset by a SPED grant, so that's off to the right. Um, and you can see that in the classroom assistance line as well. We just feel that it's our um, sort of responsibility to be fully transparent with you in terms of what things cost, where <coughs> the resources are, so that you can sort of understand the totality of the expenses. Um, as well as what the impact is on the global budget. So um, again, when you get down to the very bottom line, which is on page 12, you can see that um, the correct figure for um, the increase in the budget way over on the right-hand side is $127,297, or a 2.7% increase overall. So um, if I could just ask just a broad question. From our last meeting, it seems like there's been some cuts made. Um, not so much cuts. It was transportation decrease was the big thing. And then oh, pulling okay. in that one um, was really the big factor in, in all of this. Okay. And just some refining of numbers as, as we went through some okay. things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the transportation decrease is a little bit less than 1% on the budget. Okay, okay. So that's what I, yeah. Yeah. I think 1% is about $47,000. Right. right. And the last iteration was like 3.64, if I remember right. So. Okay. Um, anybody on the committee have any questions? No? Not right now? No? Well, I, I don't have so much have a question as a possible suggestion. I, I was very excited when I saw the one. <laughs> I they said it in an good. email, yep. the 1.55, and then she said, well, I was told it was 2.7, and then I went and looked at the yeah. back page. <laughs> I apologize, the, I didn't carry through the all The overall that. cover sheet. Um, and, and I realized that, you know, a portion of this is a, a conscious effort to reduce you know, the amount of money taken from school choice, but we've right. got to a surplus situation in a difficult year for the town's budgeting and I'm right. wondering if in school choice and I'm wondering if we might want to take some of that money and put it back in so that we're at least down to 2.5 if not two right. or slightly less maybe put forty five thousand dollars back into taking it out of school choice I would this year. That. I mean. um, that would if we took a percent 
was about forty-seven thousand dollars <laughs> or forty-five thousand, we'd be at about one point nine or one point eight mm -hmm. overall. I think if we can do it, we should. So. You're talking about how much? Say that last part again. I would I would suggest about forty-five thousand dollars. I think Judy said it was. It would be basically we would that take that offset for that. Uh, right, the offset that was that done. We right. Did just back it back up. Okay. Right. Um, and <clears throat> it would take us down. I agree. With my only concern. Yeah. Well, it just. I know you're right. It's the right thing to do. Um, I think we have the money available for right. school choice, and then this, this year it would still leave us with a, a cushion to soften the blow in subsequent years because we know we're going to take a, I think a pretty significant hit next year. Right. Again, on school choice. And, right, exactly. And I so think we'd be know. whittling it down probably over three or four years, but I think this year might be a year right. to try and do it. Yeah. Knowing that we're going to probably have to right, put that feature back on that next year. We we'll continue our plan of moving the features over, but skip mm -hmm. this one year. Um, it makes sense to me, Ken, for sure. Well, what about that? Okay, so. What's the loss that we're anticipating? I mean, we put 401,000 because we were taking last year's numbers into next year. Right. Mm -hmm. But then when you mentioned that we've got um, 17 choice kids leaving. I think we're going to lose a net of about 35 or 40,000 dollars. Mm -hmm. In choice? Against the revenue that we're getting this year, yeah. From the looks of it. Yeah. Uh, Assuming no other kids choice out. Right. We're picking so, up. Six kids are leaving that are choice. Well, they're leaving our books and probably moving on to Frontiers. Right. Books, but uh, well, we have know. six kids that are choice out in the sixth grade this year. That are choice out. You're talking about. I'm right. Sorry. And this chart here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's, well, hold on. But is that is that four hundred thousand representing our in and out number? Is that, or is it just the money coming in? No, the 400000 is purely in. Yeah. Right. We, so why we are haven't we even gotten to the, We haven't even gotten to the hundred because that $105,000 still hits the town's budget. Um, no, I understand that. But, we're, but, but when we talk about uh, what we're doing with our choice reserves, mm -hmm. keeping in mind on that, Yes. the, the worry is that um, it could suddenly drop by a few hundred thousand in one cycle. Yeah, yeah I don't think it would drop by a few hundred thousand. I think it's... Well, we're losing 85,000 right here. Right. With 17 going out. Mm -hmm. Who knows how much we want to increase um, kindergarten size when we already have uh, 39 kids coming in. Right? Mm -hmm. well, I so think we're pretty confident we're going to be here around. I know we're going to have three classrooms again, probably be around 54 or 55 kids again. Mm -hmm. Relative to the low number, we always end up getting. Right. Right. I don't know how many of those are going to be choice? Mm -hmm. Ken has a, your estimate's pretty good. We've been, we'll probably get about 7 to 10. We already have people asking about choice. Yeah. 7 to 10, 7, okay. Just run the numbers. Oh, no, I. Thanks. I've been having them turn over in my mind as well. Yeah, question out in the audience. Oh, sorry. Question? John. Hi, John Poreski from the Finance Committee. Um, clerical salaries is increasing approximately 27,000. Is the, what is the reason for that, please? You can give me a page number, please? Uh, seven. Towards the bottom. You want the account number? It's in the 2210 series. <clears throat> Under the principal's office, the third one down, salary is clerical. What's the number? It's the third third line down. Under the principal's office. It's going to increase 26,691. Actually, that. Or you moved it from a nine to a 
Yep, and I'm sorry that there is an offset in school choice that uh, the main page did not pick up. I apologize for that. Um, so that, let me put that in there. It doesn't change the bottom line. No. no. Well, it will change the bottom of the, we'll change the local line if it's, a, if it's against school choice. So let me just, uh, let's see let's pick there. it up. It's going to change school choice too. The salary of the SPED secretary is 14. Yeah. CIA. <clears throat> Yeah, it would be expenses. an add on yeah. to the school choice expenses of $14,257. It's in there already. Yep. And I just didn't carry it through to the all funds page. So um, that actually decreases your percentage a little bit. So I just made that fix. So while you're, while you're doing that, can I just ask a question for clarity's sake? As so I'm looking at the back to the last page, the, the headings it says total budget adjusted. Yeah. FY19. What is that? That's um, the bottom line matches what was voted on town floor. Okay. But as we do budget transfers for a variety of reasons, for example, we had to transfer <coughs> some funds from one area of the budget for teacher salary into another area because we're required by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to. Um, code them in a different place. Yeah. So that reflects those shifts that are happening during the year. But if, if I look at last year's uh, town meeting mm -hmm. budget, it would be 4 million, 720. 882. 882. Yes. And the DES proposed FY, that's the, what's being requested for. Yeah, and that okay. number now adding that school choice um, or taking that school choice number away from the local that number now becomes four million eight thirty three nine twenty two. And again, I apologize for the error. Um, but the joy of link workbooks is that. So that would then reduce the increase then that you're requesting was two point seven percent. Yeah, and now we're down to two point three nine. Okay. So before we're anybody else says anything, we're now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, basically, thank you. I, you know. So, thank, well, thanks the eagle eyes that caught that because again, you deal well, with so many budgets and so many lines. That's a pretty good number. The 2.39 is even better. So yeah. Well, know. let's revisit the 2.7. I'm Pardon? just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So it would make it would make the total increase um, from 127 and whatever it was down to now 113.040. Thank you for catching that for me because these things happen. That's the beauty of a linked workbook. Make the change. Yeah. And tomorrow when you go back and look at it, you know it's Sorry. I'm looking at the salary increases, uh, how they reflect on page two versus the total teacher salary, about 2% increase. Um, is this, I know that there's negotiations going on. You're anticipating a 2% COLA? With, how are you, what are you anticipating in the salary increase? I am not at liberty to speak That's about right. that right yeah. now because those negotiations all happen in executive session and so. But how will it affect the budget? Will it increase the budget? Or we the have budget could be the same? Factored in a conservative, uh, an or estimate number. I am not at liberty well, to say what that okay. number is. Thank you. So. <laughs> Sorry. I had to ask. It's a violation of uh, open meeting law for me to say that, so. Any other Yeah, I don't know if it's even calculable, but is there a cost per student that you know? It, has it gone up or down? What's the trend? Do you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can look that up on the DOE website. Yeah. It's on the DOE yeah. website. The and it's a little over. It's a little over fourteen thousand. I looked it up this morning, and yeah. I forgot what it was. I yeah. think it was like fourteen six or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's off the top of my head. 
that's often a reflection of our decreasing enrollment rather than increasing. Ma'am, no, it's. This, this is not uh, related to the budget you're presenting, but Trevor and I were at a meeting on Monday, and um, both Joe Cumberford and Natalie Blaze, our representatives, said that the budget, um, foundation budget, was being reviewed this month yeah. and yeah. was going to be revised this month for the July 1st um, budget, seat, you know, start of the new budget. And, um, I, indications are, and I'm, you know, I've been working, doing some work on this. Um, indications are <coughs> kind of that supposedly we're not going to be cut, cut, but we're not going to get any more, more money in the future. And um, I, Trevor and I are both very concerned with what we heard at the MMA conference and over different meetings, and, and certainly we're having no input. I mean, it was a shock to us on Monday to hear that they had done so much work already. And there are mistakes that I have found in the foundation budget already uh, in my research. And um, I, I'm just very, very concerned. And I'm hoping that we can get some kind of commitment from the school committee and the administration to try to, we're going to have to ask for some waivers. Or I'm, I'm not sure how to do it. I'm, I've been in touch with the Department of Revenue trying to figure out how we're going to approach this, but um, we have potential to lose three or 400,000 is what I can estimate. And that, I mean, we can't just absorb that. I mean, we're talking tiny money here tonight. Everybody's thrilled. We're all happy. But it could be, it could be completely changed in the next couple months. I, and, and, and just talking to the meeting, because Skip <coughs> went to the meeting originally where this started over a year ago, and it, in our estimate, it looks like a three to $400,000 at risk. What, where it comes from is they're looking at those towns that they, quote, consider wealthy and trying to, so for example, Wellesley, Weston, you know, the wealthy towns. So they're, what they're saying is, look, you guys can afford to take less state aid. Unfortunately, Deerfield, somehow or other, is considered a wealthy town, uh, which is a problem. And Carolyn's right. I mean, we've, we've got issues that most other towns, certainly other towns our size, don't face. The very substantial portion of our uh, equalized valuation sits in nonprofit, non-tax paying facilities. Uh, and there are several other items that, that we have well, some questions about Well, some of our zip too. code encompasses Waitley. And of the 2,200 plus income tax returns in the South Deerfield zip code, 315 are Waitley. But it's not calculated on Waitley's wealth factor is calculated on our wealth factor and um, I mean that's 10 percent so so that we're not getting credit for from a population point of view and and that shouldn't be in our mix and so you know and of the 700 and something that are up in old Deerfield it's not taxable and you know a huge percentage of those are not taxable so this is we need to figure out something and that's our formula is not accurately corrected, collect, you know, um, calculated for right. us. It skews the number. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm, I'm just really concerned because based on what Skip and Trevor and I went to about a year ago, the initial meeting where I was so upset, it, it looks like it's three to four hundred thousand dollars less. And that's for the elementary school. Frontier is on top of that. And, and so, I mean, I can't even imagine what that would do, impact our town. So I'm hoping that we can work together on this because this is, this is really something that we have to rally around and, and, and really try to appeal when we see what happens in this revision because we're not, we are having absolutely no input into this revision. This is what I was so freaked out about on Monday is to find that it was so far down the line and, and I understand there's, you know, everybody just needs more money for education, but it certainly is skewing very heavily to the inner city urban schools. And us, uh, we are going to be the losers for sure. So we'll have to just, you know, once we see what's going on or where we can, we'll, we'll need some advocacy. 
Here is this part and our part and this kind of I mean, we're going to be like carpooling down and beating on doors kind of thing. I mean, that right. really is what Fair we're going to have to do. I mean, seriously. We're going to really have Make the sticky bus. We'll all go. All right. <laughs> but I'm serious. This is very, know, it is, it is very upsetting to me because we work so hard and we look for every penny and we want to work together. We're, you know, everybody is, is putting in a lot of time and effort. And, and to have something like this come in, it's a, it, it has a substantial, substantial impact on us. Okay. Okay. So, we'll keep the uh, school choice. Yeah, case. Case. <laughs> case. Three or four hundred thousand sounds pretty good. Until that other shoe drops, we don't really have an answer. Right. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. No, we don't. I, I, but, I, but I just wanted to say it's on the radar. Yeah. It was shockingly moving so much faster than we anticipated. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we have no ability to, or we're not, there's no process that we can even participate in, which was what was shocking to me. Well, Julie um, shared numbers. You have the cherry sheet, the initial cherry sheet numbers today, and it looks like Deerfield's got less money coming in next year than yep. this year. Yep. We have for the last 10 years, right. it's, it's been 10 down. years downhill, not large amounts, 10,000 bucks oh, a year. Well, but $10,000 a year, that's 100000 over the last 10 years. Yeah. Uh, it's substantial. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about like a huge three or four times in one year hit, which is what, I mean, I, that's what we're concerned about at this point. Okay. All right. Well, that's very sobering. Uh, <laughs> anybody else? Any other comments? Well, I just... I, I, I guess um, I'm waffling a little bit about, I mean, if we're at 239 right now, um, you know, I, I just, knowing what's coming, I just hate to move a, we're moving that teacher to that position because that's the true cost um, for appropriation. And uh, if this budget is, is acceptable to the town, I'd like to leave it the way it is, but... Um, and then maybe if we can do capital instead of asking for capital um, throughout the year, if we see how what, what goes on throughout this year, and we can maybe do some of the capital on school choices we'd like to do. But I, we've got a lot more experience with that. Me, well, leave it up to you. Um, I, guess, I guess my response would be that maybe the finance committee and selectmen chew on this and think about it. We have school choice funds available. Mm -hmm. um, and this is me speaking uh, more than anything else. We could use that to adjust down, potentially use that to adjust down. The committee would have to be in agreement down to a 2% or something like that, which would be about $17,000. Or we could fund two of the <coughs> capital items that were approved tonight which yep. would be the new ones, the gym floor and the, I can't think of the other one off the top of my head. The oh, bath, the, uh, bath. the bathrooms. Yep. Um, and, you know, take that pressure off on the capital side. I, right. You know, I, I don't know what the best answer is. I mean, we want to be realistic yeah. in what we are pointing towards on school choice. And, and Judy's made that provision, and Judy and Tina and Darius have made that that provision to get a position out of school choice over into the operating budget. Um, I was saying let's roll it back if we have to, um, but ultimately it's got to get out and we've got to be able to plan for it for the future. So, uh, I, This is just my personal opinion, but I would say let's just, this is, looks good, let's just sit on it for a little bit. Yeah. Let's see if we get more information on the Foundation. I mean, mm -hmm. we're supposed to get information in the next couple of weeks on this budget. Yeah. And um, and then also we'll be further along on the town budget as to where we are too. Um, so uh, right. if we need to, we can come back. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of. We have another meeting before town meeting. So. And just a comment very quickly to follow up on Ken. Hopefully that the school committee realizes that the. Uh, Capital Improvement Committee is trying to reach out yep. uh, with with capital improvements within the building. Yes, mm -hmm. it is a town absolutely. asset. Absolutely. And, yep. You know that. Yeah. If you take a look at the capital plan compared to 
previous years, You've been I think you can see there's an effort being made. Absolutely, there. absolutely. To just, to follow, just to follow up, um, the, there's a school advisory, um, I mean, a building advisory committee you've just formed. The school itself will be one of the buildings on the assessment list. Any other public comment? All right. You mentioned that the, that the green communities grant stuff is going along pretty good. New lighting in here. So there's a lot of good improvements going on. We'll tell you the, the boilers, I think the bids are out or. They were just coming in. I think they're, they're just coming in. So that work's going to happen pretty quick. Is that under a grant? Yes, mm -hmm. green communities mm -hmm. grant. Yep, all new lighting and, and new boilers. Now we'll put down operational. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, sure. it should. Yeah. Sorry to jump in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's exciting news. Uh, all right, great. Well, thank you all for input and hard work. Um, I guess we will. Uh, motion to close the hearing. Yeah. Motion to close the hearing. Okay. Thank you, John. Hmm? Thank you, okay. John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good job. Good okay, so now. Yep, thank you all for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Are there any others? I don't know. We'll find out. I'll get a ticket for that. Yeah, I gotta do that. Unless you got someone else to play. You don't. You skip once to get that. Yeah. Yeah, just make sure. Watch out for Skip because he's trying to get someone to run for selection. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay. We're all set. All three back books, but. Yeah, I'm going to move. Okay. I'm going to move. So we didn't have to go back. Perfect. Thank you. Um, all right, so back into our uh, regular session. That's all I saw. Yeah. Okay. Organized here. Okay. Um, any? So back to our regular schedule. I guess sticking on the budget. Any further? Yeah. Uh, comments or anything about the budget before we maybe take a vote on the budget? Um, My comment would be to make a motion to approve the budget as at four million eight thirty three nine twenty two. Is that That's correct? Right? Yes. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. Unanimous. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. We'll have a work you. on that. All, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for it's a group effort. Chance. It is, I know that. Well, that's the beauty five of eight. having the winter workbook. Two, five, it takes a long time to build eight. it, but yeah, once it's built, for yep. example, oops, you could make a little whatever fix. and fix it pretty quickly, and it'll just push right through. So. That's great. Yeah. Okay, moving on to uh, reports, principal's report. Sure. I'll keep it brief. You have it in front of you. Um, a big thing that happened with the floor replacement and pre pay, all three Yay. floors were replaced over vacation. Great. Um, yeah, I should take a peek at them. I will. They're a different color. They're like a color, I don't want to say pink, but maybe oh. pink sand. <laughs> Where did that come from? That was what was chosen. Okay, uh, yeah. as long as it's nice chosen, up. it's good. It's a little brighter. Where I can't remember. We're happy with them. Good. That's good. Yeah, we're pleased to invite Sapphire Dijon, is that how you say her last name, from the collaborative to follow up with another social justice conversation and consultation to our diversity leadership team, the Deerfield Inclusion Group, our faculty, and then we'll have a family night as well. And then we're looking forward to our second family math night on March 14th. Great. Yeah. And the classrooms, let's see, we have pre K kindergarten still collaborating, doing some nice autobiographies, and then looking at some local biographies. In second grade, we have a student teacher from UMass, so she's mm -hmm. collaborating and doing a nice poetry unit. Fourth grade is wrapping up their poetry unit. Uh, fifth and sixth grade did a non-perishable food drive, and they actually were able to pack 167 lunches to wow. end that, which is great. Congratulations, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sixth grade is finishing the journalism unit. We actually had a nice time being interviewed by lots of the, <laughs> lots of the kids in the sixth grade, so those are all written and published, and they had a nice publishing party. And then the specials, Spanish, of course, is always up there. They're doing some new words about the seasons. Right. What's going on in the classrooms? Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you much. And anything with the collaborative? No, how's that? That's, 
Uh, and uh, superintendent? Anything to add? All budget, all the time. All budget, all the time. All right. Quick question on the yeah. search. Is that uh, for um, business manager? Did that, did that ad go out? And <clears throat> okay. Yep. We'll be doing interviews this month. And, oh, great. Um, okay. We bring forth the candidate in, um, to the school committee at the joint meeting um, in April. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Is it closed? Is the application date gone by? Or yeah, it, it has closed, it's but closed. if there's, you know, we'll, the interview process hasn't started, so we can still review any other applicants. If there's anyone watching that wants to <laughs> email me, they certainly can. But we, we kept it open for the month of March, so we have a pool that we'll be looking through. Okay, great. That's wonderful. Thank you. Ken is okay. serving on the interview committee. Great. Thank you, Ken. So, to help cool. me with the process. Awesome. So, Okay. We had a couple okay. school committee members and a couple staff members to help out with that. Perfect. And if that's Looks search, like a fun group. It's a fun group. If that's <laughs> water managers and oh yes, <laughs> yeah, light. If that search is <clears throat> successful, then we continue on with TMS. TMS the has a contract year. until the end of July. Right. The month, so we'll have a month of overlap. Um, Assuming that somebody is chosen. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's basically um, the TMS contract has a provision in it that we can extend it for you. Yeah. Um, so we did that so we'd have to rebid it um, if we were unsuccessful. Okay. In that type. So it's gonna be, so you, one could say that TMS is an applicant as part of it because they have a, mm -hmm. yeah. um, they have a, uh, an option to, to extend their contract. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, and I guess now we're going to um, just go to executive session tonight. Yeah. Um, it's on the agenda. So it's, on the, it's on the agenda, always moving forward, regardless because we're in negotiations, okay. so I can give you updates. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the um, I can do this on camera because it's not whatever. But the, it's, well, it's no, the uh, there's been we haven't had a meeting with the teachers, um, we have one tomorrow, so um. We haven't had enough. We haven't had a meeting with the teachers or the IAs. I can think since our last meeting. Right. It was the one in between was canceled, so there's no new news. There has been no. Um, we're kind of stalled, um, but they do have a new. Um, they have a new representation on their side, and we'll get things moving a little bit. I think um, I've had a conversation with them, and we'll be moving a little bit quicker at this point. Okay. Uh, anybody have anything else they want to talk about tonight? No. Okay. Um, I guess motion to adjourn at 25 after 7. <laughs>